Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Right now at 6 o'clock, we are keeping winter weather forecast today, at least for some of us, but more snows on the way as we look ahead into the upcoming week. Details on what you can expect in your foreign forecast coming up. All right, Brian, and we are going to talk about our developing story right now. A bus in service today to take people to and from an event at a local business. It happened this afternoon, that crash rather, at Harvest Elementary School. Victor Williams joins us live from the school tonight. And Victor, what can you tell us about this? Was anybody hurt? Well, Pamela, Sandra, thankfully everyone is okay, but you guys can still see right over here this large hole from where that bus crashed into the building. As you guys can imagine, school is canceled tomorrow. And there's a bunch of people texting me, have you seen this? There's a bus that crashed into Harvest. All these pictures start flooding in my phone. I stopped by and I... There's a bus hanging out of the school. <laughs> it was quite the unusual sight at Harvest Elementary for Ben Isaacson and other onlookers Sunday afternoon. A school bus crashing through the building after the driver loses control for an unknown reason. I just hope that everyone's okay and the driver's okay and they can fix this building without any other problems. Turns out it was a Saline area school bus that was contracted by a local business to shuttle passengers to an event. I feel horrible for the school system and for the person whose classroom that is. That's got to be awful to have a wall missing in your classroom. As a tow truck pulls the 30 foot plus bus out from the structure, you can see just how much major damage has been done. The silver lining, if any, is that there was no one inside the building and the bus driver was the only one on the bus. The question remains, however, as to what caused all of this with the driver. I did hear that the driver had a stroke. Um, I really hope the driver is okay. Of course, this is a terrible situation to happen to anybody. And crews are hoping to get this hole covered as soon as possible, but all before and after school activities are canceled tomorrow. The hope is that things will be back to normal on Tuesday. In Celine tonight, Victor Williams, Local 4. A lot of work to be done there. Thank you, Victor. All right, also right now, Allen Park Police are investigating a deadly shooting at a mall. This happened last night around 11 at Allen Park Motor Lodge. Police say they found a man. He had several gunshot wounds. This was after receiving calls of shots fired. They do believe it was a domestic violence dispute. The suspects in this case, a man and a woman, knew the victim. They were taken into custody. This was after police conducted a search warrant at their home. Their investigation continues. And it's time for a look at our forewarn weather. There were some snowflakes yesterday. Things are pretty chilly now. Yeah, I saw a few flakes out there this morning as well, Brian. Yeah, that's right, Sandra and Pamela. We've seen a few snow flurries on and off as we've head throughout the day today. A few breaks for some sunshine as well, but we are going to keep some of that cloud cover into the forecast heading into the overnight hours tonight. Tower cam from Windsor looking across the river. Plenty of cloud cover. Cold temperatures sticking around all day today. 36 right now here in Detroit 35 over in Howell 34 right now working into Pontiac and 35 over in Adrian wind chills have been hovering into the 20s and 30s working throughout the day as well so feeling just as cold as it actually is outside this evening radar looks a lot more ominous than it actually is the good news a lot of the snow we're seeing on radar not reaching the ground just save a few snow flurries thanks to that northwesterly flow so as we go through the evening hours tonight I am going to keep some cloud cover under the forecast down to right around the freezing mark by 10 o'clock tonight. We're into the 20s early tomorrow morning with one more dry day on the way tomorrow before the wintry weather moves back in just in time for the middle portions of the week. We'll talk more about that and temperatures getting even colder than that by next weekend. Your complete 41 forecast coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Brian. A crucial victory in Nevada has led to Democrats now retaining control of the Senate for the next two years. Now all eyes are on who is going to gain control of the House, which is still up for grabs. This is so such a cause uh, for a celebration. A celebration indeed for Democrats who will now retain control of the Senate on Capitol Hill. The critical win comes after Nevada Democratic incumbent Catherine Cortez Masto defeated Republican challenger Adam Laxalt after trailing him for days as votes were counted. We've known this was going to be a, a tough campaign, but like all of you, I'm a Nevadan. 
and I know what it takes to deliver for my home state. We won because we had a really good agenda that we actually passed that helped the American people on things they cared about. This should have been a huge red wave. It should have been one of the biggest red waves we've ever had because you know, the President Biden's uh, approval rating was so low. Democrats managed to hold at least 50 seats in the Senate. The victory comes as a major boost for President Joe Biden. Now the question remains, who will control the House? So far, Democrats hold 204 seats to Republicans, 211. The number needed to control the lower chamber is 218 seats. Let's just get through the election, OK? Uh, they haven't won yet. As I've said all along, and be perilously close. We can win it. Whether we're going to win it remains to be seen. And we may not find out who wins the House for weeks as the vote count continues in states like Arizona, California, and Oregon with a large share of mail-in ballots. In Georgia, Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock and Republican <clears throat> Challenger Herschel Walker are facing off again in a runoff that takes place December 6th after neither candidate cleared 50% of the threshold. All right, now to the Lions, and can you say streaking? Yeah, Hobie's here to talk <laughs> more about the road win for the team against the Chicago Bears. You know what? You want to say that people were saying that the season was yeah. over two weeks ago? Yeah. Now, though? Maybe Different that story too. is taking mm -hmm. a turn. Well, the last season and a half, well, it's been a winding road for the Lions, but maybe last Sunday it could have been a turning point. They beat the Packers a week ago, and today they pick up their first road win under Dan Campbell. This one, I was proud of them, man. They just hung in there and they kept fighting, and uh, you know that was uh, that team played well. You know that was uh, they played hard, and uh, but our guys responded, and that's a huge win, man. That's two all. That's that's two. That's two back-to-back, -back. that's a division win, and that's our first road win in two years. So those are all big things for us, so I was proud of them. And Justin Fields did put up some huge numbers, but his one turnover, a major storyline in this one. The Lions defense had a takeaway for an eighth straight game, while the offense, they took care of the ball only their third game this year without a turnover. We'll have much more on this one coming up in sports. All right. Another win for the Lions. Yeah, we'll take there it. We go. But thank you, Hobie. <laughs> so much more to come right here on Local 4 News at 6. Here's Priya Mann. You can't shop all things Detroit without a Detroit tote bag. We'll show you how families are prepping for the holidays at Eastern Market. They're all the rage on campus. They're like little polite guys. Why so popular? They come bearing food. Monday morning, Nick Monticelli shows you how these adorable high-tech delivery bots work. You feel like you're living in the future. From the moment you place your order to the moment your food arrives. Hello, here's your delivery. Plus, a new age of influencers is taking over social media. Learn how you can make a living on social media no matter how old you are. Monday morning on Local 4 News and streaming on Local 4 Plus.